So we got a challenge thrown at us today, trying to figure out how to put a heater in a Crownline 220 surface, super small engine compartment. I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how I'm gonna do that. But remember, when you get your heater, we put the QR codes on the side of the box for you to go fill out your warranty registration and read your owner's manual. Please make sure you do both. Let's get busy on the install. So we're down at Water Sports Central and the guys decided to throw a challenge at me. So we're in a Crown Line 220 Surf. Basically they said we've got a boat, it's got a super small engine compartment. We want to know what would you do to be able to install a heater in there. Then he opened his hatch up and I'm like wow. You want to talk about small, I mean, this thing is shoehorned in there. But, since we're in mild climate again, this boat will be on a trailer. We could go to a medium, but since we're in the climate we are, we can go to a small on this boat. And you can see how small my small heater is. People ask me, like, do I need a lot of room to put it? I tell them, if you can put your hand on the ground, you can pretty much put this heater on the ground. So, after we spent some time looking at the boat, I came up with the perfect solution how to install this heater in the boat. So let me bring you in here and show you exactly what we're going to do. As you can see, this is a little tricky because this is a super tight engine room. It took two of us to try to get this installed. One guy had to hold the heater while the other guys ran the screws in. But as you can see, it's really tight space. All we needed was a little bit of space. We actually mounted this on the back wall. We're running the heat across the transom of the boat. A back, remember I said a lot of the heat comes, a lot of the cold will come in from the outdrive right in the back of the motor through the exhaust and up the manifolds. So what we actually did is blow the heat straight across the back, which is covering where the outdrive comes in, it's covering the manifolds, and it'll keep that cold flushed out of there. So we have it on one side, blowing the heat across, and it should recirculate this entire engine compartment at that point. So come in here and take a look, and what you'll see is the the inlet is this side, the exhaust is that side actually blowing across the back. And you can see it's perfect because there's some water pipes and stuff around the back of there for the ballast. So we're actually going to protect every bit of the back of this now. I think he's found a good viable winterizing option. They really thought they were going to stop me and we weren't going to have a place to mount this heater and be able to protect this boat. But after five minutes worth of looking, we got it solved. We're going to take you outside, talk to you about the fresh air vents, talk to you about the outdrive, how do we keep the heat maintained inside the engine room, and then how we're going to run the plug on the outside of the boat also. So a boat that does not have shore power, you have to find an ingenious way to get the power cord out so you can run to an extension cord or either plug it in your house or wherever you're going to keep your boat. And I like these plugs right here. It's pretty simple, you can just put a hole on the side of the boat, mount this right in the side, got a waterproof cap. That way, whenever you get home or your boat's on the trailer, you can just plug right into your boat and your heater plugs into this side, which is in the engine compartment with your heater. Makes a nice, clean, beautiful install. Makes it real user-friendly for you guys to plug in your heater. Be careful about pulling your heater cord outside of hatches and stuff. If you leave a gap open on that hatch, you're going to allow that heat to come out like a chimney. You don't want to do that. So however you get your cord out of your engine compartment, just make sure it's sealed. Okay, so one of the other things we want to talk about when you're doing an install in a boat was the fresh air vents. So this is for your bilge blowers to either push air out, but it's also to allow air in. So one side's usually exhaust for your bilge blowers, the other one's inlet so your motor can get fresh air. So with these, you want to make sure they're covered. Because once the heat finds these, they'll actually act like a chimney and create a vacuum and start sucking the heat out of the boat. Plus, if you've got cold wind blowing in here, it'll actually blow in and flush air, flush the hot air out of the boat. So what we like to do is you can, I've seen people make canvas covers. I've seen people do tape, which I don't like putting tape on the side of a boat. I've seen people stuff towels up in here. But this is shrink wrap tape. It's got a little tack to it, but it's not real sticky. This is what they use for shrink wrap boats. So you could do something real simple, like a run you a strip across here. Real easy like that. What that's going to do is that's going to lock the heat in there. It's going to keep the cold from blowing in there. It's going to help your heater do its job and maintain the heat inside the engine compartment about 50% longer. So guys, make sure you pay attention to the small details. Let's fill all the gaps and the holes that we can to keep this air tight. That way it's not like running the heat with your windows open in your house. So whatever you do, try to make sure that we force the heat to stay inside the boat. That'll allow the heater to do its job a lot more efficiently, less runtime, less money out of your pockets. 
kind of tight back in here, but I wanted to get in here and show this to you. One of the other things you consider, we showed you how to cover up the fresh air vents. Well, the same thing here. You have an exhaust hanging out. So if this boat's going to stay on a trailer or is going to be on a lift in the lake, you have the exhaust hanging out, which is basically cold air can run right in here, all the way up into your manifolds in your boat, and it will keep those manifolds cold and make them very vulnerable. So again, you can find your shrink wrap tape. You could use a towel, you could use whatever. Stuff it in there. Seal this bad boy off. And again, just help us maintain the heat, keep the cold air from flushing in, allow us to do our job better. So you guys make sure you're paying attention to those small details that will really help you.